I stepped into Lissandro's hair salon and shivered, preparing for the cold stare of the business owner. I had visited Angela at least 20 times before, but we had never really connected. I was the director of Eggleston Square Main Street in Boston, and in that role, I spoke with owners of stores about their businesses and ways to improve the business district. But this salon was special. Angela was well known in her community, and I really wanted to break through. So, visit number 21, here we go. But this time, she was staring at me and seemed to be really connecting. And as I rambled on about a community meeting, she stared intently. Yes, my 20 visits and lots of prayer have finally paid off. I'm breaking through. But then she interrupted me. Your eyebrows are terrible. I can't let you leave here looking like that. Let me do them for you. Honestly, I had no idea what doing your eyebrows meant, but I suspected it involved pain. <laughs> and no way was I going to be uncomfortable and embarrass myself. But then as she asked again, I saw something else. I saw courage and passion, and something clicked. She was really asking me to value her skills. She was offering to teach the community organizer how to organize my eyebrows. So five minutes later, she ripped off the hot wax, and it hurt a lot. And as I sat there wondering about Novocaine or ice packs, she explained why she had stopped coming to the community meetings. She believed that my organization had taken away the parking spaces in front of her salon. And that was my in. I called Julie Ann, our city liaison, and she learned that the parking had been removed given its proximity to an, inter to an intersection and she made several phone calls that resulted in two-hour parking spaces nearby. And at the next community meeting, I saw a familiar face, Angela. Now, you probably weren't thinking that a talk about entrepreneurship would start out with a discussion of eyebrow waxing. But tonight, I want to invite you to think about how that exchange illustrates the power of entrepreneurship. And not just the startups downtown, but small businesses owned by people like Angela in your community. And that power comes through relationship between you, the customer, and the entrepreneur. And I want to invite you to think about small businesses as places where I believe you can live out God's call to love our neighbors and transform our world. Angela's story illustrates three key ways to tap into that power of entrepreneurship through shared needs, shared community, and shared transformation. First, your need for a product at a local business can be the spark to start a relationship. Social science research by Dr. Brene Brown has proven that vulnerability leads to connection. After thousands of interviews, she found that overwhelmingly, those with the deepest levels of connection are those willing to be authentic, to reveal their needs, and be their true selves. Before, I only saw Angela as a woman who needed my meeting, a woman whom I wanted to care for. And I tried to hide the fact that I needed her to connect with me, to come to the meeting, to prove that I was successful in my job. But her simple, bold offer to care for my visible need sparked a relationship through the exchange of services. And once I allowed her to care for my visible need, our deeper needs on both sides were met. My need for relationship and her need for parking, for respect, for success in her business. As customers, we have the opportunity to share needs, needs in ourselves and in the other, placed in our path every day and in every store. And second, through those relationships, we can build community. Deep in central Kentucky, in the tiny two streetlight town of Wilmore, is a family-owned grocery store that's operated since 1956. And every day, faithful customers come to Fitch's IGA from across town and across the county. Leonard Fitch is in his 70s, operating the store as he was trained to by his father. And like his father, he has factored grace into his business model. 
He has stacks of boxes in the back of his storage area, but those boxes aren't full of cornflakes or bananas or soup. Those boxes are full of bounced or bad checks that he's quietly, knowingly accepted from shoppers who wrote them hoping to maintain their dignity and put food on the table. In the same way that my need for Angela's skills formed a relationship and led to deeper connections in the community, Mr. Fitch's caring relationships with individual customers have created a whole community drawn together by his generosity, respect, and love. In a recent survey, 91% of small business owners reported contributing approximately $40 billion in the last year through volunteering or donations. That's roughly 10% of all charitable giving in the US. Larger businesses would call this corporate social responsibility, but Mr. Fitch and business owners like him call it being neighborly, meeting the needs of family, friends, and strangers, a role Mr. Fitch would describe as responding to God's call in his life and work. As customers, we have the opportunity to share community beyond ourselves, beyond the other, placed in our path every day and in every store. And third, living into and shopping in community can lead to transformation. Victoria lost her husband in 1991 and was left caring for three young children in Tanzania. She started Selfina, a company that leases equipment, animals, and other assets to women interested in starting businesses. This lease to own model has launched a whole community of companies, a corn flour company, a printing company, an embroidery company, and more. Victoria saw and honored needs and built a whole community around those. And the result is transformed lives. And this isn't just a warm, fuzzy anecdote. Research by the United Nations has shown that women-owned businesses improve the quality of life of the business owner and her family and her ties to her community. As customers, we have the opportunity to share in transformation in ourselves and in the other, placed in our path every day and in every store. So I wanna invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Now picture the cafe owner who handed you coffee this morning. What if you see him differently? What if he were an agent of change in your community, in central Kentucky, in Tanzania? Now open your eyes. I believe that God sees the needs, community, and transformation potential of each individual behind the cash and behind the cash register. And as I see it, our role as a customer is to absorb and reflect what God sees and what God has given these entrepreneurs. The power to meet our needs, to skillfully and courageously run a business, to hire local staff, to fulfill a broader mission of transforming their communities. Tomorrow, if you choose to go to a small business, you may be party to a transformative encounter. And I wanna invite you to be open to go beyond your need for a product to your need for a relationship. And you might find that by sharing needs and building relationships, even those formed by a set of sculpted eyebrows, your heart and your community can be transformed. Thank you. <laughs>